Hi, welcome to High Growth with HTDC. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. And HTDC is the High Tech Development, High Tech Development Corp. We are the state's agency, and we are the advocates for anything tech, entrepreneurship, innovation, and manufacturing. And I want to kind of go over what's, what's the latest and the greatest, what's going on in town before we meet our awesome guests today. So firstly, this past weekend, this past Saturday, was the inaugural Taste Awards. And this was hosted by the Hawaii Food Manufacturing Association. It was a really awesome event. They had about, I want to say, 300 people there. They had a chef challenge with local chefs. And they had to use dishes. They had to use local made foods to create their dishes. And HTDC and Innovate Hawaii's very own Wayne Inoue was awarded Advocate of the Year along with Nina Tanabe. So congratulations to Wayne. And so that was a really great event. So we're looking forward to next year's. Also next week, Shaka Khan Security Conference. I kind of have no idea what this conference is about. It's an IT security conference. It's next week, June 23rd to the 25th at the Modern Honolulu. The title of it is Sun Surf and Seashells with the capital C and they're featuring world-class experts in IT security. If you want to find out more, you can check it out at shakakan.org. Also, next week, Thursday, EF Hawaii, Entrepreneurs Foundation of Hawaii is hosting Bootstrapping, How to Succeed Without Venture Capital, featuring two very successful Hawaii companies, the Kamakura Corporation and Nobscot. Find out how they grew without VC funding. That's next week, Thursday, June 26th at the Waikiki Yacht Club. So that should be interesting. Also, HTDC is offering our free legal business advice in partnership with the Business Law Corps. Sign up for a free 30-minute session at htdc.org legal and come down to the Manoa Innovation Center for your half an hour free business advice. Lastly, calling out to all SBIR companies, winners the state has a matching grant fund that HTDC runs we can award you up to half of your phase one award amount if that's you and you've won a phase one recently please email us at sbir at htdc.org so our wonderful guest today we have Ray Chung of the box jelly Ray Chung Fujihira of the box jelly and jump school and we have Kai Kao and Jesse Thompson both are, are you both founders? Yep. Yep. Co-founders. Co-founders. Co -founders. Team. Yep. A V archive. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Latest and greatest startup. Mm -hmm. One of them. Very cool. So, I wanted to ask Rich Chung, what is Jump School? Like, this is something you're running. Sure. So, um, Jump School is a program that we started uh, myself and Alini Oliveria about eh, maybe like six months ago, and um, what it is is a, a program to help. Uh, our, our founders achieve uh, product market fit. So it's for uh, startups, uh, usually in the early stages, and they want to find out, you know, uh, how they can kind of grow their business. And uh, we really focus on customers and uh, keeping uh, certain types of metrics on them, and then um, having them, yeah, achieve this thing called product market fit, where basically people get, you know, super mad if you disappear and can't live without you or they're super stoked <laughs> that you're there and they tell all their friends about you uh, and of course you know buy your product or service so that's what we do so basically helping mm -hmm. companies figure out how to make their products desirable to customers yeah, yeah basically and mm -hmm. um, yeah we do that using a lean startup methodology and it's kind of like a well it's a rolling program so people come in at any time so it's not really like a cohort system although you are uh, with um, other companies kind of working through your problems. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm. And do people come in kind of knowing what the lean methodology is? or uh, Most of the time they have some kind of idea, but um, a lot of times, um, you know, it's not necessarily like accurate uh, mm. view of what mm -hmm, lean is. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of, there's tons of stuff out there. Um, and, you know, there's the books and all these things. And what we kind of do is, uh, Marlene's pretty much read every single book and it's on all the blogs <laughs> and everything. So we, we just distill all this information into things that are important 
uh, for the stage that you're in, mm -hmm. and we break it down into five uh, different stages, um, and uh, and we just kind of hone in and help you kind of achieve. Uh, you know, hopefully, you get your product market fit and start to take off, and then you know, leave our program and join an accelerator or get funded or bootstrap your way to. So where should you be with your company to get into jump school? Like, can you just come with an idea, or? You should definitely come with an idea, and you have to be able to be putting in time to work. Um, jump school doesn't work unless you're actually building something. Hmm. So we've had some people come in just to kind of learn, and it's really about experiment, experiential learning. Hmm. So uh, we, we, yeah, we basically we won't take you unless you're you really want to build something. Um, <clears throat> a lot of times, you know, they're building tech startups. We've had a lot of companies that aren't. We've had companies like stand up paddleboard type of companies and we had you know, all kinds of like crazy stuff so it doesn't it doesn't really necessarily have to be a technology company cool. and we actually we like to have variety okay so it could be like a lifestyle company it could or? be a lifestyle company yeah sure oh yeah. very cool and so they're in they're in your first kind of cohort group mm -hmm. VR yeah so yeah yeah, VR Actually, we've been, in, we've been in two so far. Yeah, so we've been, really cool. they've been kind of around for a while now. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've, you know, we've kind of had a lot of people come and go, and they've, they've stuck around, and sometimes they go away for a little while, maybe they go to the mainland, do some things, and come back. Um, but, you know, they, they've been through the process a few times, and they kind of know it. Oh. We haven't quite achieved product market fit yet, uh, but we're getting... So once getting you're in gem school, you're in gem school. You can always come back and... Unless you break the rules or something. Yeah. There's, there's, <laughs> there's guidelines and rules, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah, as long as you're willing to put, put forward the work, because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. a lot of it is learning from what everyone else in the class is doing and what they're going through. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. if you have nothing to contribute uh, as mm -hmm. far as like progress, then you're not really helping the class. So mm -hmm. you're better off uh, I don't know, doing something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Measurable progress. Yes, measurable progress. OK. Mm -hmm. So measurable. tell me about what you guys are doing. Like, what has your experience been? In jump um, school. I, my, my experience with jump school, I, I think the biggest thing for me was uh, uh, it got me talking and pitching, which uh, when I joined the team, I didn't think I'd ever have to do that. And <laughs> there, you know, a lot of the response from jump school was, no, you're a co-founder. You have to be able to pitch just as, just as well as Kai can. And Kai is still much better at me than doing at pitching, but uh, um, it definitely made me realize the importance of being able to pitch my, the business that I'm a, a co-founder of and also mm -hmm. to um, the importance of getting real, real customer feedback and data um, is, is so important. I th and that importance was lost on me. It was like, oh, I got to work. I got to get this product right before I can put it out there. But mm -hmm. so, no, so you got to you got to get your customers first mm -hmm. and then get, and make a product for them was the kind of the mm -hmm. kind of point that was really dri driven home. So how did you do that? How did you do? How did you go out and find customers? Um, it just you know you you go to the places that your market is, is, resides in and you go out and talk to people and mm -hmm. get their opinion on the pro on the product. I mean, it, it certainly varies for each company. You know, mm -hmm. you have to go to different places. Yeah. Uh, for us, our, our company is kind of targeted at a pretty large group of people. Any anyone who has a cell phone basically wow. is mm -hmm. the larger market that we're is targeting. A large market. Mm -hmm. um, and so we, we, we actually, we went to Waikiki and we just, you know, asked random people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that, that was our sample market, uh, mm -hmm. our, our first wow. sample. Yeah, yeah. We've actually been doing even more yeah. interviews, you know, just mm -hmm. uh, over the internet and stuff with people who are kind of into virtual reality. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For, for those, mm -hmm. of, those people listening out there, uh, mm -hmm. our company is a virtual reality startup. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. it's, it's like uh, viewing pictures mm -hmm. from the inside out rather than looking at a picture. Yeah, and, and we, we created little surveys for our, our different customer markets, you know, the general audience, our fo the focused enthusiast mar markets. We made different canvases, uh, kind of seeing what those customers want out of the product and um, trying to find uh, where, where our product fits with them, which has been really helpful for, uh, for kind of changing their, our product and our, our web service to cater towards them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So but before jump school, like if if I just had an idea, I might just put it out there because I think, oh, this is a good idea. <laughs> you know, everyone's going to love this, mm -hmm. you know, uh -huh. without researching, without conducting surveys, without doing the research and mm -hmm. stuff. You know, mm -hmm. it's but now, now we've kind of been getting all this data. And it's a, it's painting a clear image, a p clear picture of, you know, what people actually want. Mm -hmm. And then it's much easier to make a product around people's needs. 
think because you kind of know you're gonna have customers right right like the, the program kind of started uh, with Alini um, and she was in Brazil doing her first her first on her second startup, she sold her first one, and she was doing her second one, and she had this amazing idea for this toolkit for developers. So she basically spent two years, heads down, just like, ah, like programming <laughs> stuff. And, oh, I got a new idea, I'm gonna add mm -hmm. this feature, I'm gonna add this feature, and doing this whole thing. And then two years later, she released it, and uh, nobody wanted it. Oh, um, <laughs> so painful. she basically wasted a bunch of money and a, a, a lot of time. Of time. Yeah. yeah, and uh, so um, she, uh, yeah, she kind of had this, like, kind of, you know, it would be kind of mess up your life a little bit. She's like, oh, man, this sucks. She ended up going to San Diego, and there she met um, uh, Eric Ries. And this was wow. before before he wrote the book. So she before was kinda he got like, all big and yeah, famous. Before all the big famous <laughs> stuff. Um, it was, like, this guy that, you know, had these concepts that he was, was kind of talking about and uh, preaching about, in a way. And um, she really loved it and just got caught on. and. Uh, you know, wow. started rolling it with it. So she's done like, you know, uh, over uh, several thousand customer interviews in the style. And we have a very kind of specific style that we use in our interviews. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, and she just kind of took to it. And um, yeah, we're super psyched to have her. She's in Brazil right now. It's funny, like most of our jump school customers are in Brazil right now, which is mm. weird, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's cool. It's like Hawaii to Brazil and also um, in California as well. So it's kind of cool. Wow, so you can be in Jump School remotely. Mm -hmm. How does that work? Um, yeah, so the remote one, uh, you just kind of come in and you... Uh, video conference. Yeah, video conference in. So we've mm -hmm. had Maui mm -hmm. Jump Schoolers. I think we awesome. had one Big Island Jump Schooler. And then uh, California, um, Brazil. That's great. Yeah, I think... I thought we had a couple Big Island... Yeah, we had a, maybe yeah, a couple big island. So we've had like a bunch of different, different places, and we're we're continually like, we're we're a lean startup ourselves. So we have metrics that we track, and we we're always adjusting things and cutting things. And right now we're in a little bit of a hiber hibernation mode while we build up uh, the program to add some, some kind mm -hmm. of other other things that I've seen, you know, in my experience, you know, in blue startups and you know, uh, in the global accelerator network and whatnot. So like the next iteration um, yeah, of some, Jump School. Some, yeah, the next iteration of Jump School. And still, it's not it's not a full-blown accelerator by any means, but it should give our uh, our startups a little bit more of an edge and, you know, prepare them better for entering into an accelerator or, you know, getting out there and, and making some some good headway. Like, do you come out of Jump School with customers? Like, yes. Do you guys That's the plan. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. And the plan is to come out of Jump School with customers without spending any money. Oh, or that's even better. very little. <laughs> very, little <laughs> very little money. Yeah, so the lean is very... That's why it's lean. Literally lean. Yeah. Right? So yeah. lean startup, creating companies with as little waste as possible. <laughs> and um, yeah, if I had a slideshow, I'd go through it. But you can just check out jumpschool.co. And we have all our curriculum. Everything is like open. So mm -hmm. you can go, you can look at everything we're doing. You can see whatever his projects are. You can download our slides if you want. Um, you know, just we me, me and Ali just kind of have this... It's fun for us, so we're doing it. Oh, that's awesome. It's fun for us, too. Yeah, it's fun for our students. Yeah. But do you pay to get into jump school? Yeah, there's a, there's a fee. Yes, yeah, so it's like a monthly a monthly <laughs> fee. You can start anytime you want. You can stop anytime you want. Mm -hmm. um, it's a super flexible kind of program. And it's usually in, well, it's in the evening, so, you know, mm -hmm. after work or whatever, you can eat and rest a little bit and then come out to jump school and, and work on your, hopefully, your next big thing. Are a lot of people bootstrapping, kind of like they have full-time jobs, and this is something that... Yeah. yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. all, all of them. Yeah? <laughs> yep. Wow, awesome. Well, we all, have, we all have our own dreams. One day. You know? yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you should put yours in. Yeah. No excuses. I yeah. Hesitating, hesitating. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no excuses. Yeah. Let's go do it. So what kind of... Um, so when you guys said metrics, like what... Yep. Give me an example of what kind of metrics you... Um, you know, really putting, like... For example, getting the like front page of your business out there and getting people interested in it, so we get actual user testers who are using our services. Um, having having those numbers is, is super important, uh, and Jump Tools really uh, drives that home. That get get customers right away, get 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 them get feedback, get feedback 
get the get the numbers because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. if your product is selling, it's going to look better to an uh, to investor. There's also different metrics. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. There's there's a lot of metrics, mm -hmm. but there's uh, there's That's kind great. of there's a way to differentiate them in the sense that some metrics are like you know how many users do you have, mm -hmm. and then another metric would be um, you know kind of different though like not how many users you have, but how many of those users clicked this mm -hmm. button, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and how many users clicked this other button. Yeah. So that you can kind of figure out through testing, you know, what works and what doesn't work mm -hmm. and phase yeah. different things out. And it, yeah, it's really about getting that out so people can experience it as soon as possible, not, not waiting till it's ready, it's getting it out there. Right. Yeah, it's probably the hardest thing it's, for yeah. most of our founders is mm -hmm. just getting out. over uh, the fact that it's not going to be perfect mm -hmm. when it goes mm -hmm. out into the real world. Mm -hmm. Um, and we definitely had that, that hesitation w between us as well. And uh, Jump School has helped us get through it and out there. Um, and uh, I think that was probably the most important thing that well that I got out of it. And uh, um, at least at least for it reaching customers. And are people pretty mm -hmm. understanding? Like you kind of tell them this is not the final version, or what do you you uh, say? Yeah. It's, it's, it's like, it's like this, this is a prototype, but um, yeah. mostly you yeah. don't you don't want to lead the customers anywhere. You mm -hmm. want to just be very. Uh, Listen a lot, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Pay attention to what they're saying, mm -hmm. and uh, versus trying to sell, right? Because you're not right. selling yet, right? Mm -hmm. And kind of just try and poke them to see if they'll, you know, give up anything else. You know, mm -hmm. oh, this I don't really like this. Why? You know, mm -hmm, what? Mm -hmm. Tell me yeah, more. That's the, one of the hardest things yeah. is yeah. like the interview process mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. interviewing in the way that we, you know, we, we think is good. Um, it's not leading because it's super easy, like. Mm -hmm. Especially when be, you're super psyched, right, yeah, about yeah. your Yeah, psyched about your thing yeah. and being able to, like, be excited about hearing the things that you didn't want to hear. Mm -hmm. That's, like, that's mm -hmm. a skill in itself. Yeah. That's uh, not easy to, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, Pretty much every single entrepreneur in the program started off leading, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. Unless, yeah. unless, you're, single, unless you learn that yeah. through, the, yeah. through the course, it's you don't like, really know that. You don't think about mm -hmm. it. You just it think. It just kind of comes. Yeah. yeah. yeah you just got to stop, let them experience it from the beginning so you can find out where your problems are. Um, and, not, and you know, not try to guide them through it at all. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Wow, that is rough. Mm -hmm. And so, based on like some of the metrics you got, mm -hmm. how have you like pivoted your product? I know that's a big lean thing, pivoting mm -hmm. or. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, can we talk about the Oculus to mobile? Oh pivot? yeah, absolutely. That counts. Um, so, were you gonna start just selling the Oculus? Uh, so we we were developing software, mm -hmm. um, a service for the Oculus for, Rift. So this uh, is the original. Yeah. Right. The, the it, that's that's because um, that was the only device that existed. You know. Mm -hmm. You want to tell them what the Oculus Rift is? So oh, an yeah. Oculus yeah. Rift is mm -hmm. a virtual reality headset. Um, you plug it into a computer, and it basically acts like a monitor does. If you plug in a new monitor, you know, to your computer, mm -hmm. a new screen, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. except you're looking at the screen. It's mounted on your head with a mm -hmm. strap. It's like ski goggles. Mm -hmm. And you look through these lenses, and the lenses magnify the screen so that instead of the screen being like this big, mm -hmm. it's like, mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. immersive. It's mm -hmm. like IMAX, yeah. wide field of view. So mm -hmm. the idea is that we're trying to get it as, as close to human vision as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, humans have pretty wide field of view vision. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. Out in the peripherals, mm -hmm. you can still see my fingers. Yeah. Um, it's not quite there yet, but it's pretty close. Yeah. It's like it's like that. So like as yeah. immersive as yeah. possible. Yes. And it has it's, head tracking. Uh, it has head tracking, so if I turn yeah. my head to the mm -hmm. left, mm -hmm. it, the be, world mm -hmm. follows. The, mm -hmm. Whatever I'm seeing on the screen mm -hmm. follows. So mm -hmm. our, our originally our service was targeted towards that device, but our our, our web, which is you want to tell them what the web service is. Uh, so yeah. so the service is mm -hmm. for hosting spherical panoramas. Mm -hmm. um, Similar, okay. similar mm -hmm. to Street View, mm -hmm. um, in the content of the yeah. of the images, the mm -hmm. way you can look mm -hmm. around the image, but mm -hmm. you know, with Street View, you're just looking at it on a screen, you know, mm -hmm. um, with mm -hmm. the mouse left and right dragging yeah. around. Mm -hmm. You're not actually in it. Like mm -hmm. you're walking on the street. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. So um, the, the pivot came because we were targeting Oculus Rift mm -hmm. because that was the only way to get our software out there. Uh -huh. and the Oculus Rift itself um, is not out to customers yet, as far as consumers goes. Oh. It's only out to developers right now. There are some consumers who kind of jumped the line and got the developer version, but it's not. It hasn't reached a mass market. So, oh. for us, we're making a web service for customers that that have peripherals. Very small they don't, market. Yeah, very small market. Very small market. Um, mm -hmm. There's only like sixty thousand yeah. of those in the wild, mm -hmm. and most of them are developers. Yeah. They're not consumers. Mm -hmm. 
and also mm. it's very it's it's way cheaper than it's ever been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, it's three hundred dollars for an Oculus yeah. Rift, mm -hmm. um, which, which compared to like the hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars a similar uh, wow. piece of technology yeah. used to cost a couple of years ago, mm -hmm. but um, it's still kind of expensive. Yeah. So we we pivoted mm -hmm. from being focused just on this hardware device for enthusiasts mm -hmm. to um, porting our software to Android, yeah. mm. so that we can now target anyone with an Android phone. Yeah. And the big thing that, we, that we're doing now is that we're also developing our own hardware peripheral so we can create our own market and then have a complete experience. So right. when, you, wow. when a user can get into virtual reality and then they can have the entire experience and the creation experience, so you can make panoramas on your phone and mm -hmm. upload them to the service that we're developing. So you get to be a part of creating content for VR, you can experience VR, and mm -hmm. it's, it's also a lower price point and it's, compa it's, it's will hopefully be compatible with a wide range of devices. Um, Another about. another thing mm -hmm. is that uh, mm -hmm. the target market is so vastly different from mm -hmm. enthusiasts. Yeah, that's what I was yeah. gonna say. You know, mm -hmm. my grandma, for example, probably isn't going <laughs> to strap on you know yeah. ski goggles and yeah, you know yeah, plug yeah, it into yeah, her yeah. gaming computer. Mm -hmm. She doesn't have one of those. Yeah, yeah. you know, but um, she she does like looking at panoramas using my yeah. phone. Yeah, you know? oh, that's mm -hmm. cool. Um, and that's kind of what I realized yeah. is that it's much. If you can reach it, just it, your it, average person. Yeah. Right. And that's actually, yeah. those are the people that respond the best anyways, mm -hmm. because average people don't really know it's possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a that's surprise, true. you know? That's true. Yeah. 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 It's, 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 it's fun to watch people's faces when they try out the experience, and it's just, they have this virtual reality face, their mouth just hanging open, like, oh <laughs> my gosh, it's so cool. Aww. Yeah, so every single time I've taken a picture of someone using the device, their mouth is just jaw dropped, they're just amazed. That's cool. And um, we really wanted to make the experience <laughs> Mobile, pocketable, not this headset you put on your face, but something a lot less intimidating than that. Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. Something that can reach a market that's ready for an introduction to virtual reality before they take a big leap into an expensive mm -hmm, device mm -hmm. that is wrapped on their, that's strapped to their face and requires a, a large More purchase. Yeah. So that was the pivot. Yeah, that was the pivot. That's huge. Yeah. Well, one of them. Yeah, one, of, one of them. One, one of, of many pivots. One of many pivots. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was the main. That was the major one. That's a big uh, one. Mm -hmm. And that was after you started at Jump School? Yes. Uh, Very yeah. cool. Mm -hmm. We're going to take a quick break. Mm -hmm. So my guests today are Rui Chung, Fujihira, Kai Kau, Jesse Thompson, the Archive, and the Box Jelly and Jump mm -hmm. School. This is High Growth with HTDC, and I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki, and we'll be right back. I'm Jake Fidel. That's Sharon Moriwaki of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And every Wednesday, we have Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We've been doing it for some time now, and we have some fantastic guests on there, unbelievable guests who give us insight into what is going on in a very complex, sometimes very confusing, sometimes very disappointing <laughs> <laughs> area of, of progress in the state. So we love doing this. We love meeting them. We love talking to them. We love having their ideas out on the table. So maybe, just maybe, we can all make some sense of what's going on. Sharon, what do you Thing. I think that's absolutely correct. We enjoy we enjoy ourselves meeting with all these people <laughs> and hearing about the energy and the state of clean energy and hopefully we advance clean energy for the state. So it's terrific. Join us. Okay, it's us. every Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday is Energy Day. Every energy Wednesday, Wednesday, four to five p.m. Hawaii, the state of clean energy here on Think Tech Hawaii. Energy we'll Wednesday. We'll see you there. This is a little easier to understand as a well, business model. Welcome back to High Growth with HTDC. I'm your host, Cindy Matsuki. We are on Think Tech Hawaii, streaming live. My guests today are Ray Chung, Fujihira, Box Jelly and Jump School, Kai Kau, and Jesse Thompson okay. of V Archive. Is that how you say it? Archive, V Archive. V Archive you can call like it whatever that. you want. <laughs> Basically, Archive spelled with a V instead of the A. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Or, it's a little or, long. Or uh, <laughs> Archive spelled with a V, but it's silent. <laughs> but it's all the same. Like we'll, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> There's two V's, right? Uh, correct. The first, the first V. The will first be V silent. silent. Yeah. But now you remember it, right? Yeah. So. I guess. We want it to be a debate on the internet. No, it's a proper. It's like it's like GIF and GIF. <laughs> <laughs> um, so when is Jump School New and Improved coming out? Yeah. So I mean, we're still doing uh, like. Many programs. So if you're interested, uh, you can email me at like info at theboxjelly.com if you want to know about our kind of under the radar 
uh, classes we're doing right now. So if people want to get started. Yeah, if you just want to get started or interested in learning more, you can always go to jumpschool.co, um, you know, which has all the curriculum. Um, but um, we'll be rolling out the new and improved version in August. So we should be seeing some more kind of um, more mentor action going on. Oh yeah, are you going to bring in more mentors or? Going to bring in some more mentors and maybe touch on a few different topics. But um, we we still really feel that the the piece of customer uh, discovery and customer development um, we still want to focus in on that as being our main. What does that mean? How do you develop your customer? Um, you you build your company with your customer always in mind. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like this kind of constant back and forth, um, and that's really uh, kind of at the crux, you know. And if you want to learn, you can always check us out, <laughs> <laughs> jumpschool.co, mm -hmm. and we'll be happy to teach you. <laughs> Very cool. What has been one of like the most memorable things out of Jump School? Oh man, that's happened. Mm. Any customer oh, experiences? The, the, the first time I was at jump school and Kai couldn't make it, and then someone came. Oh, I, I, you were there one time. I had to pitch, <laughs> and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I'm not prepared for this." And um, and I, I think the first time I ever pitched at jump school, I I joined Kai as a partner like I think three days before, <laughs> and wow. it was like pitch to jump school. This is this business I joined three days ago, and um, that was that was nerve wracking, but when I did it. And it nice, went okay, nice. and uh, and but I wasn't expecting it, and it was but it was a very good experience. Um, it got me out of my shell. Uh, I, I'm a very much an introvert, so. Uh, but is it just the two of you? Uh, our, yeah, our company is just the two of me. But at Jump School, there was the other uh, the other uh, kind of cl classmates, I guess, who were who were um, who were who were receiving the pitch and giving feedback. That's another mm -hmm. thing too, is that we bounce off of each other. It's not just the mentors we. Uh, but the mentors are great. They they push you. They they, they let you know when something's not going right, um, and to re-examine something that you're mis you're focusing on things you shouldn't be focusing on, kind of thing. Uh, and so it, it's very so, you know sometimes it's hard truths, but you know when, when when you look at it in hindsight, it's exactly what you what we needed. So um, so yeah, I guess I guess yeah, my, the first pitch I did was probably the most memorable experience. Uh, wow, for me in and school. you got through it. Yeah, yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. I don't really have a top one because everything's just kind of been awesome. Um, but I, I'd, I'd like to say that I've just I've been super grateful for being able to get out of my own head, you know, mm -hmm. and get out of our head because because yeah. we can we can talk about something and agree that it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. and Remember then when we were like the first up. sale and we were like trying to convince you to sell it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. <laughs> sell it. Just sell it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, but it's not ready. Yeah. yeah, it's not ready. Yeah. Yeah. Sell it. She's gonna buy it right now. Alini Sorry. wanted to buy one of our prototypes. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But it was the first one we ever made. Yeah. yeah. So we didn't want to sell it for sentimental reasons. <laughs> yeah. And um, it, it didn't get across that it's like, oh, this is this is this is a test run. This is get the system in place so you can sell. And we finally got it, and it's like, okay, let's just do it. And uh, you know, it's, and we then accepted we, we, our first payment. Yeah, we accepted our first payment. <laughs> wow! So, yeah, congratulations, that cool. we, yeah. that's cool. Mm -hmm. Holy cow! Yeah. So, what stage are you guys at now? Um, like? We are at the prepping our prototype for uh, pro, for our, our first production run, and then, and then we're going to and then we're going to do crowdsourcing. Or uh, Indiegogo. Or Indiegogo. Some sort of crowdsourcing yeah. may be hosted by ourselves. Um, and which I think HCDC is going to assist us with, so that's great. Yes, we will. Yeah. <laughs> very good. We're very excited about that. Uh, made in Hawaii. Yeah, made in Hawaii. That'd be and that, awesome. and that <laughs> for me is just awesome that we can do that. Mm -hmm. um, I was a little, little, little worried about going to a, a mainland accelerator, mm -hmm. but now, now but I think. That would be awesome. Yeah. It, 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 would be, it would be awesome. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, who is your customer? Who did you define your customer as? Um, we, well, I think. You know, right we, now we're targeting the enthusiasts yeah, as our customers we're, because the first ones. those the, are the people that know. Like the mm -hmm. VR. They, yeah. they already know. We don't need to educate mm -hmm. them, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. That's that's the path of least mm -hmm. resistance. Yeah. So, so there's like your early adopters. Yeah, early right? adopters. And also our evangelists. Um, we're hoping that this product is something that they can project VR out into the world with and then get other people into the, into the world of VR with. Um, mm -hmm. And then... You know, after that, then it's everyone. As Sky said, everyone that has a cell phone, uh, a smartphone at least, but 
but uh, we, we, we're going to go for a core customer base first, which uh, Jump Schools help us identify as our target market. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Initially, we wanted to just target everyone, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. But then Jump School taught us, no, you need to really focus and mm -hmm. narrow down. But have you gotten... You can get more accurate data if you're more specific. Mm -hmm. Have you gotten any feedback from just your general, like, non-enthusiasts? Yeah. We, yeah. We got We've gotten that. feedback from non-enthusiasts. We've mm -hmm. gotten feedback from mm -hmm. video game enthusiasts. I mean, mm -hmm. our software is not video games. Mm -hmm but um, most of the people with these goggles are mm. video game players. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of what we hear back from them is, you know, uh, mm -hmm. it's really cool, but I mostly play games. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. then what we hear back from non-gamers that we show our proprietary hardware, mm -hmm. uh, they're just like, wow, this is really cool. How much? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, I think we can see our hardware as a platform for third-party developers in the future. We're not really focused on it right now because we want to develop our own entire experience, but that's also a possibility in the future. Wow. Not just viewing panoramas, yeah. but also Using it other for, software. For gaming, made for video. Mm -hmm. Wow, very cool. Mm -hmm. Does Jump School cover like the whole gamut of your business, like pricing and promotion and all that kind of stuff? No? no. Just finding the customer? Yeah, yeah, we're pretty much focused on the customer. And mm -hmm. there's some of those pieces are part of it. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for pricing, we can help you figure out your pricing. Mm -hmm using, you know, our methods or, but um, yeah, we're pretty much, yeah, focused on The customer on and thing. the product. I think it's up to us to ask, though, if we need, if we need assistance, you know. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, it, it, we don't say that we need help with pricing. No one's going to really, mm -hmm. you know, jump out and say, oh, let's help you with pricing. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got to yeah. say something. It, it kind of feels like jump school is like before you're doing that, too, like it's like, you, you got before it's like when you're making your business model mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. it's tr trying to help you figure out if it's viable or not so you don't waste a bunch of money on something that's not going to work and your customers will tell you what mm -hmm. it should be priced at yeah you know. yeah have mm -hmm. people told you I'd pay right. 500 that, bucks for that's, this yeah. that's the point mm -hmm. you yeah. can figure yeah. out all that information yeah. and then do averages mm -hmm. of what mm -hmm. people would pay mm -hmm. what people wouldn't pay yeah mm -hmm. you know you talk to your customer and uh, find out what they what they would pay for something or I really think of um, mm -hmm. our program as being like super specific and a complement to other things uh, that go on. So, you know, I'm also like involved with Blue Startups too. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, we just really want to do this one piece uh, well mm -hmm. and um, hopefully help people, you know, get some kind of traction uh, and get to the point where they get a, a choice, you know, whether they want to bootstrap or if they want to get funding or, or they want to join an accelerator like Blue. Um, you know, they, they kind of have a choice and it kind of gives them and empowers them to do, you know, to have options. Mm -hmm. um, and also, just being at Box Jelly, also Blue as well, uh, but mostly, you know, you know, Box Jelly in the community, it's just seeing like a lot of people spending a lot of time and a lot of money on ideas that um, don't pan out, you know, and a lot of times, uh, you know, a lot of mm. a lot of this kind of waste could be avoided if they just, uh, you know, had some kind of methodology to help them uh, think through their ideas and, and refine them. And um, that's, you know, kind of, you know, why we're doing what we do because we, we see it all the time. Mm -hmm. Alini's been through it in like a major way, um, and we just, you know, yeah, we're just here to be that that piece of the puzzle. Did a lot of people kind of have the same experience as Alini? Like they had to actually learn the hard way that you can't just put yeah, something out most there. Most people learn the hard way. <laughs> yeah, most people yeah. learn the hard way, and most people keep doing it the hard way too. Which yeah. Is, yeah, it's 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 interesting, but you know, um, yeah, I won't go too <laughs> too deep into it, but it's it's ha you know it happens, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen yeah, in the future, yeah. it's happening mm -hmm. now, but um, you know. I think uh, Lean Startup is one methodology, mm -hmm. um, and there are a bunch of different ways to get the job done. Mm -hmm. uh, but there's definitely like a place, you know, it's something uh, I think people should really uh, spend a little bit of time, maybe a few months, uh, get to learn it, and um, then have like one more kind of arrow in your quiver where you can you know, pull mm -hmm. it out when you, when you see these problems or you want to, you're at a certain phase and you want to get some kind of feedback and, you know, Build a, build a customer or build a company with the customer in mind and, and really kind of trying to track what you're doing 
not just using you know the metric of like how much money am I making is this one uh, but uh, mm. you know kind of use a variety of different ways to like look at your company and see you know if it's going in the way that you want it to hmm. mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so it's very metrics based <laughs> it's very metrics based yeah very customer focused very metrics based um, yeah I wish I could do a, a better job at describing it but it really is something you don't really get you it until experience. you start doing it like like even for myself like I was working on this project called Green Apple uh, which was a startup that Chad Chad and had done and Chad Kohanahana had done in um, Startup Weekend mm -hmm. I want to start Weekend and he didn't have time to do that so I said like, oh I'm going to work on it and then I started doing my uh, you know just putting it, I put it through the program literally mm -hmm. and um, I found out that the customer that wanted it was very different than the customer that I intended for huh. and I you know I kind of was like, ah, that's not really what I want to do it for, so I put it aside. Um, but, huh. you know, if I hadn't done that, I probably yeah, would have been pursuing it. something, you know, completely yeah. different. And Who was the yeah. customer that actually wanted it? So, um, so Green Apple, for those of you who don't know, Green Apple is basically a, a uh, app that helps to uh, get... School supplies, school supplies into the hands of students oh, okay. uh, and teachers. Mm -hmm. And um, the idea was basically that teachers have to spend so much money out of pocket uh, every year for school supplies um, mm. that uh, you know they didn't uh, you know that that you know it was like oh that's a problem right. But the thing that we found out, which was interesting to us, was that it was really the parents that really 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 wanted it. And the teachers, you know, they thought it was cool and it was a good idea, but didn't really get very excited about it. Huh. But the parents got really excited about <laughs> it, so. The teachers are used to spending their own money. Yeah, basically, the teachers are so used to spending their own money wow. that it's kind of like a status quo thing. It was kind of like. That's interesting. Know, it was, yeah, I had not expected that at all. And, mm -hmm. um, and, you know, like, the motivation for me was, like, to help these teachers. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. But they didn't really want the help, so it's like. Huh. I'm not saying that all teachers, you know, but you know, it was, it just wasn't on the top. <laughs> there was like so many other things on there that they have to they have to deal with. Mm, that I see, I see. It wasn't like that high priority, priority thing. For them. Um, so huh. I was just like, oh, you know, maybe there's another way to do it that we'll see down the line. Uh -huh, and uh -huh. you know, right now, it's not a yeah, not gonna be you know something. That That's great. And you right didn't now. spend anything on it yet, right? No, you know, I maybe I bought like a couple teachers some coffee or something like that. But it was like, you know, yeah. I think you didn't have to code maybe about anything. A month or a month and a half doing that. And that was the, the team that won Startup Weekend. It was too. the team that won Startup wow. Weekend. Mm -hmm. huh. yeah, and then not only had it won Startup Weekend, but there were people who wanted to like fund it and mm -hmm. do this and that. Wow, interesting. Um, yeah, so, so having the uh, teachers being the primary um, customer. Mm -hmm. That was the assumption, that was good. Right? Yeah, that was the assumption, and the assumption, you know, doesn't mm. seem to pan out, at least from, you know, the mm. interviews that we did. Mm -hmm. um, How many so interviews did you do? Less than 20, more than 10. Yeah, so it wasn't like a ton of interviews, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it was definitely a trend there. Where like, huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so usually, you know, we suggest more interviews, but yeah. it was, anyways, I'm not going to, I'm digressing now, but. Interesting. But, no, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, no, I like, like doing I mean, stuff. The, <laughs> you know, so I'm looking forward to doing my next, uh, putting my next project through uh, Green Apple and have some internal projects that we're, mm -hmm. we're doing kind of like an internal Green Apple huh. or internal uh, jump school projects. for uh, box jelly and fish cake projects. Fish cakes <clears> are <throat> also a furniture store that I help with. Um, so yeah, if you want to join, mm -hmm. come down, you know, it's cool. Yeah. Uh, it sounds very cool. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 just, it's a good time. And a lot of it, too, is just, like, bonding with other, other People founders. People in the same boat, right? Yeah. yeah. That's rough. Like, being a founder sucks most of the time. Mm -hmm. It's like this crazy roller coaster. Mm -hmm. So when you have people that you can talk to who are going through the same thing as you and yeah. about the same stage yeah. that you are. Yeah. Um, yeah. Things get crazy, <coughs> and then and then you know that's that's the that's the normalcy of it. It's like <laughs> it lets you know this is normal. It's crazy, but this is the way things are with yeah, startups. So you have to, to you have to just deal with this and deal with that and get through it uh, to see the end.
Uh, but you can go through it together. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, we're going to take yeah. a quick break. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. This is High Growth with HTDC, and my guests today are Ray Chung, Fujihiro, Kai Kao, and Jesse Thompson. And we will be right back. Thank you. J5 Dental, that's Sharon Moriwaki of the Hawaii Energy Policy Forum. And every Wednesday we have Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We've been doing it for some time now, and we have some fantastic guests on there, unbelievable guests who give us insight into what is going on in a very complex, sometimes very confusing, sometimes very disappointing <laughs> area of, of progress in the state. So we love doing this. We love meeting them. We love talking to them. We love having their ideas out on the table. So maybe, just maybe, we can all make some sense of what's going on. Sharon, what do you think? Thing. I think that's absolutely correct. We enjoy we enjoy ourselves meeting with all these people <laughs> and hearing about the energy and the state of clean energy and hopefully we advance clean energy for the state. So it's terrific. Join us. Come okay, join it's us. every Wednesday. Okay, Wednesday is Energy Day. Every energy Wednesday, Wednesday, four to five p.m. Hawaii, the state of clean energy here on Think Tech Hawaii. Energy we'll Wednesday. see you there. I'm Jay Fidel. Hi, welcome back. This is High Growth with HTC. And we are chatting with Ray Chung Fujihira of the Box Jelly. You know, all of you know Ray Chung, and he's also running the Jump School out of the Box Jelly. And my other guests are Kai Ko and Jesse Thompson of V Archive or Archive with the Silent V, the first V. Um, so <laughs> during the break, Ray Chung mentioned the Angel List to me. Angel List, yep. Angel List, and I have no idea what that is, but it sounds intriguing. Mm -hmm. What is that? Yeah, so AngelList is basically a social network for startups and investors. Like, is it a group? Or it's it's kind of like like LinkedIn in a way. It's a site. It's a site. Okay. So it's a site online. Create a profile. Profile for yourself. Profile for your company. Mm -hmm. And then you basically you're on display for a bunch of different investors, and they cruise on the site too. Mm -hmm. That's the angel part. So a bunch of angels kind of cruise around, looking at different people, mm -hmm. um, and you can, you can say like who, you know, the type of company you are, how much money you're, you're looking for, you know, uh, vertical you are, and stuff like that. And it's, it's really fun to like cruise around and just look yeah. at everything. Kind of like Match.com. Yeah, kind of <laughs> like, like Match.com. Oh, like like match. match. From the investors perspective. <laughs> yeah, from the investors. It, yeah. it's, it's fun, and they have like a lot of, you know, uh, it, it's a tool that I think wants Entrepreneurs, especially ones that are looking seeking funding, should really get to know well. And AngelList is yeah, it's just international. Yeah, it's All international. Uh, Angel Co. And um, yeah, it's super fun to cruise. They have this this thing called uh, syndicates now. That's really pretty cool. Where basically uh, angels can have other angels following them, and then when they choose to invest in companies, they can have their followers also invest in the companies oh, wow. as well. Oh, so, that is cool. Yeah, it basically makes them kind of like a micro VC. It's kind of like the NASDAQ. Of, yeah, it gives them a lot, lot of power to like push. Mm. Um, so like Jason Kalkanis, I remember, I don't know what happened with it, but he was talking about having a hackathon and then investing in the company that wins and then having that mm. power of that syndicate could like boost his Just investment up his. to like really like, you know, wow. give him a head, heads up or whatever. Um, yeah, so it's, I don't know, it's, it's pretty cool. And are you guys partnered with AngelList? So we're not partnered with AngelList. Um, Blue Startups uses AngelList to take uh, some of their uh, applications, but we use a different platform called F Success, which is uh, basically a, their competitors. And uh, if you go F Success slash Jump School, um, you can you can find mm -hmm. us there. And F Success, yeah, they're they're very similar in a lot of different ways. So um, people like angels will cruise on F Success. Yeah, angels will cruise on F Success. A lot of startups are there. A lot of uh, a lot of uh, companies use it, or accelerators use it as an intake, or different types of programs like Jump School, or you know, uh, I think that uh, Next also uses F Success. Um, yeah, but these are just kind of fun places to go and look at what other people are doing, and hmm. and uh, you know, look for investors. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, I remember one of the coolest, like in the first cohort of Blue Startups, one of the most interesting speakers was a speaker. Uh, I think it was the guy from Mile High Organics, and he was talking about using uh, AngelList and like fundraising. I think that was the company. It was one of Steve Markowitz's company. Anyways, but yeah, so so it's, I don't know. It's really cool stuff. We should, if 
you're in a startup, you should definitely check out AngelList and F Success and learn more about how to utilize it to help. Uh, you know, help so you're yourself. not sure if any Hawaii companies so far have gotten funding through this? Not yet. Like directly through it? I'm, I'm not they're sure. They're kind of new though, right? Yeah, they just popped up. Yeah, maybe like Angel a couple years ago, I think. But um, yeah, companies are definitely getting funding from there and it's working hmm. pretty well. It's it's a game changer. Interesting. It's a game changer because you could get a best. Like there was another guy that came out and um, he, was, he was talking at the last VC Summit about um, Johnny Sutherland and he was talking about um, how now that you have like you can get investors from all these different places that you could kind of um, customize your cap table so you can pick investors that uh, make sense for your company mm. you know so mm -hmm, maybe mm -hmm. we don't have someone who's like expertise at, at virtual reality mm -hmm. startups here in Hawaii but maybe there's one that's like in California mm -hmm, that, mm -hmm. that likes your company and you can kind of like yeah it, it gives you more options because it's a wire pool of money mm -hmm. Um, hmm. And it's going to be really interesting to see how this all uh, yeah. plays out in the future. That's but great. it's definitely these these things like AngelList and App Success are definitely uh, game changers. And I think they're going to be pretty disruptive, especially to like it's good for angels, of course, because mm -hmm. it increases their deal flow. But maybe for like VCs who aren't really getting the job done, uh, hmm. especially the smaller ones, like mm -hmm. it mm -hmm. might not be good. I don't know. Hmm. Um, I think it. Yeah, I haven't, like the past few months, I've been really busy with Box Shelly stuff, so I haven't been catching it, keeping up. But I'm pretty sure that there's been some more awesome things happening in that space. Do they do they invest just based on what you put up there? Or is there actually, oh, like, no, that's well, just the intro? That. Yeah, that's the intro, exactly. And then you, you start a relationship, and then, you know, hopefully they do their due diligence. Or maybe if you're not a good company, hopefully they don't. I don't know. Mm -hmm. but, um, <laughs> and you think for angel funding, it's okay to be in Hawaii? Like, is that okay? Yeah, why not? <laughs> you know, I think, you know. Um, it's good. Yeah, there's, yeah, I think it's good. I mean, to be realistic, we are in the middle of nowhere, but there's a lot of, I think we got to nurture our community here mm -hmm. more and continue yeah. to bring in more high net worth individuals. Yeah. There, I think there's we a can, lot of people. If we can show that good stuff can be built yeah. here, then people will have yeah. more faith. Yeah, that they can I, invest and the company can stay in Hawaii. Yeah, I agree. We we need like strong virtual and, reality companies. Strong <laughs> virtual reality companies. Yes. But yeah, more 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 really good companies and really good founders that are willing to. We stick need more it out. success stories. Yeah, it's not. It really Definitely. isn't like a get rich quick scheme, and mm -hmm. it's it's a lot of hard work. Mm -hmm. But um, but it's very rewarding too. Like there's nothing like being a founder. Hmm. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm pretty confident. Like, mm -hmm. there, a lot of cool things have been happening mm -hmm. over the past year where I'm just like, a lot of momentum is starting. So, yeah. you know, hoping these guys over here can mm -hmm. break out and, you know, make some moves. And, yeah. Yeah. Kids would be our big success story. And, uh, yeah. Like we, but, but yeah, no, I'm pretty, I'm pretty optimistic. It's really hard out here, but I'm optimistic for the future. Mm -hmm. mm. It is hard, yeah. but we love it here. Yeah. What is the hardest part about it? Just location, location, location. You're out in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. Like There's not being connected to customers or just I think supplies or probably all of both. All of those things. <laughs> well, it's, all of it's, it. it's 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 just more expensive to operate a business in Hawaii versus anywhere mm -hmm. else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's no place better to do it. Yeah. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. We live in paradise. Yeah. Right. What can you complain about? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, That's there, true. If, if, to be honest, like, yeah, there, there are things, like, we're really trying hard here on the ground. We need some air support, guys. Air support? Air support, yeah. Like, Where's it would that? be nice if there was some things to help us more. Hmm. Like, not being, like, the worst place to start a business. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? As far as, like, yeah. you know, leg you know, laws and stuff goes oh, and yeah. the climate. Yes. Yeah. Like, Definitely. those kind of things, it's like, Definitely. And every time you see it again and again, you're like, dude, like, oh. I know. But um, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. It's tough. It's mm -hmm. tough. This, especially this past ledge ledge session, was yeah. tough on mm -hmm. tech. Yeah. yeah. Like. And I don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know, I think that it's. I mean, guaranteed, is technology is changing every single industry. Like, mm -hmm. I think it's. You know, it's super. 
it's important, you know. Mm -hmm. and, um, mm -hmm. and I think Hawaii needs to put their put their money where their mouth is. Yeah, we need we right? need more help, you know. And yes. it's just not. I'm not talking about like I some agree. super extra stuff, but at least what like the other guys get. <laughs> you know, like, please. At least put us on the same yeah, playing field. Yeah, at least field. on the same playing yeah. field, because we already have to deal if with all the geo geographic challenges and mm -hmm. all these other kind of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the cost of living, you know, mm -hmm. like it would be yeah. nice to at least have like something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But some advantage. Eh, we're, we're still here. Yep. You know, we're <laughs> still here. Continue yeah. to bootstrap it until like mm -hmm. things happen. And there are a lot of people like activating from the mainland that are coming down to help too, which mm -hmm. is awesome. awesome. Yeah. That is yeah, awesome. That's awesome. So I think if we still. can also pull from our expat network yeah. yeah any of you out there if you guys see this expats we need message in help. a bottle yes mm -hmm. exactly that was a very awesome talk about jump school thank you guys mm -hmm. for joining me thanks for having on me on high growth thank with you. htvc thank you rich hung mm -hmm. box jelly jump school so we'll look forward to the new jump school in august yes yes mm -hmm. new and improved and then cut eco and jesse thompson yeah. we're gonna look forward to a kickstarter yeah, yeah. Soon? Hear when from do you us. think? A couple months. Yep. Couple months? Yep. Mm -hmm. Couple months. July, August? Yeah, something like that. All right. That's Keep your it. eyes out for a Kickstarter from B Archive. And thank you for joining us and supporting the entrepreneur community. I really believe that the tech economy and the tech ecosystem is growing thanks to people like these. So thank you for watching and we will be back next time. Thanks. Bye. Mm -hmm.